Hi guys, Gareth here from Heartfelt Horsemanship. I'm going to talk a little bit about rope skills. Um, people hear me talk about cowboy tai chi. <coughs> it's not an official martial art, as I feel it should be. Um, you don't have to be into Eastern religion to be able to do cowboy tai chi. It's just a way of building awareness about the ropes. Now everyone that comes from the conventional riding world where you only have your little leather rein and that's all you have to deal with struggles with the rope side and you could have one lesson a week for the rest of your life and not really develop the skills in it so why don't we just stick to our little thing and skip all find ways other than using this long rope what I find is the coordination and self-awareness and awareness of your body that you build using these ropes is exactly what you need to be better and more aware for your horse so it builds self-awareness your body language knowing where your body is it's almost more important than the actual rope skills themselves so one of the things is how i pack up the rope i let me come a little closer there Take the end, fold that in half, make a little loop, and I feed that loop through the eye on the halter. I keep this tag in these two fingers. You'll see why that matters shortly. Those two fingers don't go improvising until you've got it mastered. And then I push this end bit and make another loop through there, keeping those two fingers holding, and I just use these two fingers and this one to pull it through and tighten and then I just practice chucking my rope out and rolling it up when I roll it up I want it equal length coils and I want it kind of packed one next to the other so it doesn't get knotted when you chuck it out so when I chuck this out now I would expect to go all the way out to that loops along the way so I play a little game with myself to check that I can roll it up in equal lengths without having to watch what I'm doing and all I'm doing there is make sure my arms go the exact same length every time I do a coil okay nice and simple now the reason for that I'm going to have Talia follow me to Bella when I go fetch my horse, notice I said fetch not catch, I want to stay connected during the process. I don't want to be fiddling with rope when I'm supposed to be connected to her. I'll come along, give Bella a hug, it's nice and connected. I just put the rope under her neck, take my finger out, drop the excess rope, and pull, and her the rope is set up perfectly for her nose. And I stay connected and making eye contact the whole time as opposed to get you undo this sit here and fiddle and throw rope over and maybe hit them in the eye it's a far more efficient way of doing it okay so that's the absolute basics of setting up halters and when there's an emergency and you've got your halter nice and neatly packed up and you don't have to sit and undo spaghetti you thank me for this one. <laughs> okay. okay, we're going to just get into a little bit more space and I'll show you some more of the rope skills. So, a big one that people struggle with is the send on the circle. For those of you that aren't on the Patreon or haven't been to a clinic, you might not know the movements for send on a circle. You can practice this nonetheless and build some coordination I suggest practicing rope skills regularly without your horse so that by the time you get to your horse you're not flapping around and flailing about releasing on a brace teaching them the wrong thing so for my send on the circle my leading line is one arm's length from the halter my swinging line is one arm's length from the end 
and the balance of it is just out in front of me. Okay. I'm directly out in front of my little wooden pole horse. And I go through the phases. So I'll practice lift it where the rope stays loose, there's no contact on the horse's nose. And that is pointing to 11 o'clock. If you think of the horses, 12 o'clock, behind me, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock. I will do lift it to 11 o'clock, lead it to 10 o'clock, where there's a little bit of contact on the nose for the 10 o'clock. If the horse doesn't go, I will swing, guiding my energy towards the shoulder. The horse goes out, I drop my swinging end and feed down from that position. And feed all the way out. Now if my horse suddenly stopped or tried to change direction, I can slide down, get back to that same position and lift it, lead it, swing it. Now when I drop this end and I feed down, I don't bring it straight back like that because that's going to pull my horse in and I don't bounce it because that's going to confuse the horse and either stop them on the circle or make them back up. So I can lift it, lead it, swing it, the horse goes, I drop the swing in and I keep that hand there and I almost like climb down the road so it's a smooth process until the horse goes out to the end. Okay so that's your groundwork rope skills. Um, big thing is remember I said we call it Kabu Tai Chi. Kabu Tai Chi, it's, Tai Chi is these slow movements. It's not Cowboy Kung Fu. If you're doing fast movements, um, your horse is going to get bothered by that. That's sh sharp, jerky movements, get a horse worried and get them bracy. So if you have a tendency to be quick on your hands, all the more so. This is where you're going to practice on slowing it down. From a riding point of view, um, those of you that know the anti-flight checks, I have people practice the anti-flight checks without a horse, and that's the Kabui Tai Chi. So you set up as if you're standing on a horse, and that's your reins. And for a stop, you breathe out, drop your seat, imagine your feet going forward of the drive line. Put your arms straight up, level with your shoulders and directly between your shoulders. Slide one finger and thumb down the rope, following gravity. Don't pull it back until you make a fist. And then you bring that to your thigh and the other one to the horse's mane. Okay, I'm going to do that without talking so you guys see the cowboy tai chi process. Okay, really slow and methodical. We want to get away from the jerky movements that make a horse bracy. They'll get more responsive when you're using cues slowly, that when you get to your finesse stuff, you don't have to yank to make them do something or ask them to do something. Okay, the hindquarter disengagement. You would look back to your horse's hip, slide your leg back to push the hindquarters around, lift that arm straight out in front, and then make sure that the opposite rein doesn't make contact, slide down, make a fist, bring it to your belly button and step around as if your horse's hindquarters have gone around. Okay, on the side. Your steering, now this is one where a lot of people have learned to steer using their inside leg back to steer a horse. Inside leg back is appropriate to get a horse on a correct bend. Um, in terms of actual steering, I prefer to have my horse carry mine and their weight on the hindquarters. So I use my outside leg forward to get straightforward steering. Okay, so for that one, I would look where I want to go. Point my belly button where I want to go, outside leg forward and on, lift that rein, point and turn with the four quarters.
Okay. For the backup, you drop down onto your whole pockets. Slight vibration on your feet in front of the drive line. On up straight. This one, if your horse is standing still, you combine both reins all the way down to the neck. Drop the top part, rein in each hand, elbows over your hips. Make sure you're not bringing your elbows past because that's going to set you up for a very incorrect position for a backup, a difficult position for your horse to carry. Okay, I'll do that one one more time. Okay, now you notice these are very exaggerated positions. The exaggerated positions for Cowboy Tai Chi do apply to our foundation riding. We do have the exaggerated steers um, that we're not building neural fatigue when we're working on our foundation rides. It does all get nice and neat and back to the invisible cue once the horse understands it. And we'll only do those concentrated sessions for a short period every time so they don't get dull to the cue. Thanks guys, cheers from Heartfelt Horsemanship. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how I build communication and connection and relaxation with horses, you can check out Heartfelt Horsemanship on the Patreon, on patreon.com. I will attach a link and we go into a little bit more detail. Thank you.